Nation Roots, giving you the bona fide truth. We praise God. Father, we give you the praise. We give you all the thanks, Lord. We thank you for this weekend. We thank you for this week, God. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for everyone that joins on the scope tonight. Father, you're Jehovah M. Kadesh. Uh, you sanctify us. You're Jehovah M. Kadesh, Kim, oh God. Father, you are El Olam, oh God. You're the everlasting God. You're the light of the world, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this year, oh God. Even for the things that we went through, God, we thank you that you sharpen us, oh God. You use it to sharpen us, oh God, and quicken us in the realm of the spirit, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you're always there with us, Lord. Oh, you search me out. I'm never alone, never alone, never alone. Thank you, Lord, that you're Jehovah Shalom, God. You're the Lord of peace. You're Jehovah Shedek, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you're Jehovah Gibor, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you are our strength, God. You've carried us through this year, oh God. And Father, although we know on the Hebrew calendar we've already met the new year, God, for those celebrating the new year to come, as on the Gregorian calendar, oh God, we bless you, God, for their lives. We bless you for their souls, oh God. We bless you for the family members that you're going to bring into the house of God in the new year, God. We thank you for all the family members that are going to get delivered, Lord. Besides getting saved, God, they're going to get delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare it, oh God. Father, you are all things to us, oh God. You're omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, God. You're a great God, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the people, Lord, who were in our lives, oh God, up until this year, oh God, and that they have passed, oh Lord, but they will be remembered, oh God. We bless your holy name, God. We give you thanks for their lives, oh God. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they would have touched someone before they left, oh God. That those seeds, Lord, will be brought to a harvest, oh God. We'll see a har- seeds, we'll see the harvest from those seeds that they planted before they left. All the men and women of God, the true men and women of God, oh God. Thank you, God. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. And we worship you, God. We worship you, God, because of just who you are, God. We put you ahead of us, oh God. In the battle, we put you ahead of us, O God. There's no God beside you, O God. There's none like you, O God. And you give us strength, O God, when we don't think we have the strength to face addictions, O God. When we don't think we have strength to face those temptations, O God. Father, you bring up your mighty arm, O God, your right hand, and you save us, O God. You bless us, God. Father, I thank you, God, for saving even me, God. Rebe kendoro satike. Father, I owe my life to you, O God. I owe all my strength to you, O God. I owe all my strength to you, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all of the things that you are doing, O God. Father, we just worship you. We praise you, God. We pray that this word, O God, will bless somebody, O God. Let me not get on here, Lord with anything that I just want to say, oh God, but what you want to say to your people, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that those who have an ear to hear would hear, oh God, they would hear the word of the Lord and they would listen to its instructions, Lord, and they would listen to you minister unto them, Lord, whether through me or even after the scope, oh God, that you would just continue to minister to them, oh God, and that things would just line up for them line upon line precept upon precept oh god you lead your people you teach your people you give them mighty revelation fresh revelation oh god touch their hearts touch their minds oh god let them see oh god the deeper things oh god and for those who are unbelievers who may watch whether on the inside or outside god i bless them in the name of jesus christ let them see the truth oh god the truth of your word oh god the deeper mysteries oh god your dark sayings, oh God. Father, you said those who seek you out, Lord, you will bless. You will you will show them great and mighty things which they do not know, oh God. 
which means there's still things that we don't know in the scriptures, oh God, that you will come to bless us with and, and give us teaching and knowledge and understanding of, oh God, once you see that we are seeking and out, Lord. So I thank you that people will see that and they will understand that, oh God, in the name of Jesus, even the unbelievers, oh God. And Father, as I always pray, Lord, if I'm praying, if I'm praying at all in tongues, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ at any point, Lord, that there will be somebody, an unbeliever, oh God, that comes on, that hears the language and understands it, oh God, and that it will minister to them and they will be saved in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the greater faith that you're bringing us into, into this new season, into the new year, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your holy name. We cover this scope in the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover all your people listening in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you for your soldiers, oh God, that listen to this, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would send them out, Lord. You would give them their marching orders, oh God, libekosimetandabra that you will bless them, O oh God, as they go, lakti lakti, as they go, O oh Lord, that you will heal them, that you will minister to them, that you will deliver them and save them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> I just looked at the computer. It's 10, 11. You know, I see 10, 11 too. Um, so that's interesting. Let me low this down. I just looked at the computer to lower it down. I saw 10 11. As you put up 11 11. This is, y'all, Revelation Ruth giving you the bona fide truth. I'm praying that this will be a quick, quick teaching. I'm hoping. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. So I gave a word. This word I've been trying to do <laughs> since last week, y'all. I gave a word on Apostle Bryant's. Yep, yep. That that has to do with lining up the things of God for you. Um, but it also relates to scripture, my Alicia. So you you want to see God on that too. Um, so last week I um, gave a word. I was coming to give y'all a word. <laughs> I don't know what happened that night, y'all, but it wasn't going down that night. So I'm giving it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel prayed up. I feel good. And hopefully Periscope will not shut off. If y'all can share this out right now and, um, you know, some of y'all can just give some hearts so that I would know that it's not shutting off because sometimes I don't, I have no idea, y'all. So that would be great. I would really appreciate that. Okay. Um, so, here's the deal. Let's go right into it. All right, I'm getting my notes. Hallelujah. Okay. So, um, let's start with this first, right? Last week, uh, and you all might have heard some of this word, like I said, on Apostle Brian's scope, but I'm going to go just a little bit deeper, if you heard me give the word. Um, and... I'm going to try to make it quick. Hallelujah. Because I don't know when I get to teaching, I get to teaching. Okay. And y'all don't be putting up 10,000 numbers, giving, putting me off track. Like, what's this? What's this? What's this? Because I'm going to feel compelled to answer you. And then I'm going to go off and teach something else. Hallelujah. I will keep on track. And this is also something God is saying, like extreme focus anyway, right? So I'm, I'm trying to be extremely focused on everything. So anyway, let's get to the meat of the word. So about last week, um, I met some new people and um, they, you know, we were doing Bible study and stuff like that. You know, took a leap of faith. I was like, you know, y'all, you know, I'm a little funny about the news people, the new people, you know, but um, God is... <laughs> helping me in that area. Amen. Um, and also healing, continually healing and cleansing me in Jesus name. So, you know, I, I went to a Bible study and they were talking about how God keeps talking to them about Exodus. And then also y'all, what was weird is that. So I start talking about one guy starts talking about numbers. Right. And I'm like, wait, you see numbers too. And we're, 
he's driving me to this place and we're seeing numbers all on the highway. Like I've never seen it that much all in one day on the highway. I mean, I can't say I have, I've seen numbers back to back to back, but it seemed like when I was with this person, he was also like, he was seeing it everywhere. And I was seeing it even more like we kept seeing it on license plates on the highway, everywhere signs, eight, eight, eight. 222-1111. So I don't know if that was just because I was with another person who sees numbers regularly. Um, and we differ in opinion on certain numbers because, of course, sometimes God, all the numbers have duality, right? And so um, sometimes God is saying something else to the person very specifically. And, you know, of course, he thought 444 means judgment that is the flip side of 444 so i knew what he meant but i was like no it doesn't only mean judgment blah 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 so this is not the word let me let me give the word so anyway so meeting a bunch of people that also the other people in the group also saw numbers not to the extent that i see them of course but they were talking about some of the common ones that we all see right 11 11 222 blah 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 and they were also asking me you know what it meant or telling me what it meant to them. And um, I was like, this is weird. This is surreal. But there's so many other things. Oh, amen. There were so many other things about that experience that I'm not going to talk about yet, but it was very interesting, y'all. So, uh, and you never know who's listening. So I just want to, <laughs> so I just want to keep it copaceptic, like they say in the West Indies. So, um, when they were saying that about Exodus, I was like, no, God, well, you're not telling me nothing about Exodus. So I don't know what they talking about. <laughs> right? So I, was, I just keep it all the way real for God. I'm not going to ask him to show me anything that, that I'm not seeing already. Like, you know, I, I, would, I said it out loud and then I said it to Holy Spirit. I was like, well, Holy Spirit, um, I'm not seeing nothing. So I don't know what they talking about. That's it, y'all. The next day. So the fellowship was on a Saturday, right? Um, the next day on the Sunday, I'm going to church in the Uber. Y'all know how I do. And I tell the driver, can you please put on some gospel music? Because I, I just needed to zen. I like to zen in the, that's probably not a good word, but I like to clear my mind before I go to church. I don't want to hear no weird R&B on the way to church on the Sunday morning and <laughs> stuff like that. So, um, he put it on, he put, he said he put on Apple, whatever. Cause I guess he didn't have gospel music. I don't know where they do that at. So guess what? He put on the music and then boom, this song, um, at the end of the song, look, first of all, the song kept saying, deliver me Lord. And it came saying, this is my exodus. I was trying to figure it out. Like, are they saying this is my, I thought it was another word. But it's almost like the Holy Spirit was saying, listen closely, <laughs> listen very closely. So I kept straining. And the song was super long, like super long, like <laughs> unrealistically long on the highway. I was like, this God is saying something, right? Like anytime you see a number on the clock for a long, long time, or you hear a song or something like that, you see a sign and it just seems to not be going away. God is trying to get your attention very strongly. Okay. like. You know, especially for me, like when numbers stay on the clock for, to me, longer than 60 seconds. I'm like, uh, so when is it going to change? And of course, I take my pictures of it, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah, so, right. And it kept repeating in the song. So I was like, this is my exodus. Deliver me, Lord. Okay, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me, Lord. <laughs> Whatever I need, Lord. <laughs> so at the end of the song, they're like, this is uh, a song by Leandria Leandria Johnson, and it's called "This is My Ex." This is my Exodus or our Exodus, something like that. My Exodus, and I looked it up. I typed it to myself, and I looked it up, and I just kept listening to it. And it's like Holy Spirit was saying, "Play this prophetically over yourself. Play, play it prophetically over yourself." Like whenever God gives you a um, supernatural word or um, a song. Okay, a new song, especially sometimes I ask the Lord for a new song. Uh, you should be playing it over yourself repeatedly. Amen. So I was like, I guess you are saying Exodus. 
So the Lord began to minister to me like he's saying on a national and a global scale that, you know, we are, you know, coming out of, you know, um, I guess for some people they were, they still felt like they were in the wilderness um, I already felt like I came out, but I do know that God is still uh, cleaning me up, cleansing me and all that stuff. I know there's more to come because I see it in my dreams and all that. Um, so this is the meat of the word, right? And I wrote it down last week so that I wouldn't forget. And it says the Lord has accelerated us. So it's coming quickly, right? Just as the Israelites were told to now go between um when Ro Moses parted the waters and he you know he parted the waters and then the the Israelites had to go quickly through those waters and there you can imagine almost like a tsunami of water on each side one on each side right a wall of water on each side you having to walk through it and really trust the Lord and have faith in the Lord that that water that rushing water will not come down on you and and drown you basically right psalm 78 and 13 says he divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the water stand like a heap y'all know what a heap is right so um exactly so that's part of the word as well so what was also going on is that it's like when you're going when you're passing through the waters you feel fear and you're, you're leaving fear and you're walking through faith, through great faith. And, you know, for some of this, for some of y'all, it's about moving. It's about taking the leap of faith, you know, going to dealerships where you know you don't have the money really and seeing if God is going to do it for real, right? Exercising your faith, basically, and walking through those walls of water on each side, trusting that the Lord is going to deliver you, trusting that the Lord is going to give you double for your trouble. Why I say double for your trouble is because the Lord was also ministering that to me a few weeks ago. I told y'all a few scopes ago that he had me, um, he had me so double. He had me so double my first fruit. And now if y'all haven't sold your first fruit yet, you should sow your first fruit. I know people don't like to talk about this, but it's a principle in the word of God. Okay, now another day we will talk about tithing and offering, but this is first fruit. This is different. It's first fruit. And so I always sow my first fruit either in November or December. Now I was a little late this year. There's a little, some stuff going on, but um, the Lord told me exactly when to do it. And he told me how much. And I was like, double it, Lord. Y'all, Whoever was on that scope, you already heard me say this. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> now I've done that before. But I did it, hallelujah, when I had uh, enough or more than enough. It feels different when you sow out of your abundance versus out of your little, right? It feels different when you give first fruits out of your little. And so when the Lord told me to double it and I looked at the number and I was like, yo, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, I know he's doing something, right? And then on top of that, um, I had um, I had a couple of dreams. I had a number of dreams, actually. But the, these are the things that stood out in the dream, right? Wait, first, let me let me tell you an experience. So this is how the Lord will sometimes deal with you. And I, I pray that I can, it's a lot. So let me, let me, I'm trying to go quickly. So let me try to go in order. So at the same time that was happening on Sunday, then my friend is calling me that same weekend and she wants my help with negotiation uh, for a job. So I'm like, for a new job that she kind of not accidentally applied to, but kind of like she submitted the same resume that she had in the system, you know, a little short little cover letter. She didn't, you know, she didn't put much effort into it, y'all. She did not. She didn't even know why she applied, really. And I was thinking at the time, that's the Lord. But her interviews went on for a whole month, right? It went on for a whole month. She was exhausted from interviewing with all these different people, of course. And if you need mock interviews, holla at your girl, because I'll get you prepared. Hallelujah for panels and all that. But it went on for a month. And at the end of it now um, was like last week. And, 
you know, she was pretty sure that they were still interested and it was going good, but she was so confused about, is this the right thing? And she was really searching the Lord, like, Lord, please tell me, but she, you know, she wasn't fasting or anything, but she was just ask, kept asking the Lord the same question, like, what, you know, what should I do? I love my job. She loved her job. She, you know, she says they're treating her well. She's a little bit on overload. She's a VP of financial services um, at a bank. Now, you know, a lot of banks are dealing with PPP loans, EIDL, and they need more people with um, the skill set that she has in order to um, process those things. So the only issue that she was having with her job really is that it was kind of overwhelming being the only one dealing with um, the PP payment protection. Um, I forgot the last, the last letter. When do y'all know? I'm sure. Um, so, um, these are the loans that the federal government is giving out, or (laughs) I would say lending, um, to small businesses and stuff like that. So being that she's at a bank, she was dealing with a lot of that and she didn't have a lot of help. Um, but she loves her job. They treat her well. Her boss treats her well. He's always looking out for her best interest. So this is something that she didn't necessarily want to leave and they pay her well. Right. But something kept nudging her. Y'all say something, something kept nudging her to follow the process through. Cause she was like, should I tell them? Oh no, don't worry about it. I said, no girl, you better go through that interview. The interview process. Go ahead. You never know. And then she had a dream. I interpreted the dream. And I said, um, you never know who's going to be there at this new job. I believe God is saying he's giving you a choice, but this is going to bring you, you know, more happiness that you don't know about yet. Right. So I interpreted the dream. Right. And um, long story short, she was super stressed, crying and everything about about a job that's going to push her over a hundred thousand dollars, of course, like. This is, I'll just tell y'all the company because y'all don't know her, Cisco. Cisco pays a lot of money, pays very good. It's mainly an IT company, IT-based company, Cisco. And, um, you know, yeah, they do layoffs and stuff like that. You want to be careful of that. But, you know, I gave her some questions that she could ask them to, you know, like buffer from that. But anyway, she felt her emotions were a whole mix of fear, faith, and then also like, the unknown, right? It's the unknown. She has no idea what that's about. And at the same time, I'm going through not the same thing, but similar. I feel like her and I go through similar things around the same time. That's how I guess God has shown me we our lives uh, not parallel a little bit, I would say. And so um, I was going through my own thing and I was just like, this is so weird that she's going through these options at the same time it's like a pulling a ripping it's like a ripping away from one thing and a pulling into another thing now long story short i keep saying long story short but here's the deal y'all so she tells her we time it out and everything we plan the negotiation what she's gonna say what she's gonna tell them what she's gonna ask for for because she don't really want to leave her good job so you know, I advised her to just use it as a negotiation tool. And so I prepped her for that. She went to them, used that tool, and, you know, let's talk about what they can do or whatever, whatever. And <laughs> they went to, you know, the higher ups. They were like, Mm-mm. well, you know, what job is it? Who is it? And then they were like, well, they're not even a bank. You know, the HR and hiring managers, they were like, they're not even a bank. Like, they basically said, we're no competition for them. That job said to her, we're no competition for them. And the HR manager said to her at her current job said to her, well, you know, I would take it. We would take it. Her, her boss also said he would take it, you know, if he was, you know, her age and, you know, da, da, da. Um, and with her circumstances, he would take it. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> It was basically like her mind, um, her mind wasn't made up, but it's almost like God made it up for her. Not almost like he did. It's like, you know, you're going to come into decisions, um, into making, having to make quick decisions if you're not already. And it's going to be like split decisions. And you're going to know whether it's the Lord or not the Lord. 
Amen. You're going to know, excuse my nails. Let me not, let me not put it in the camera. You're going to know, but no, they didn't try to hold her out. <laughs> they were like, basically we cannot, we cannot match that at all. And we would take it. We, we would take it. So go ahead and just do that girl. Do <laughs> just like, wow you know and you know she would like text me frantically like what should i say now what should i say now i mean this has been going on for the whole month okay and only to come down to a decision that was basically made for her i mean she cried and cried and cried and cried and i was like i understand but this is going to be good i feel like this is going to be good it's new so it's going to hurt a little bit and so y'all are going to see some of the same things you're going to have new fellowships, right? New um, people. And I, I just experienced this and it might trigger you a little bit. It might trigger you a little bit, but it may be for your blessing, right? It may be for your stretching and your blessing. Amen. And so <clears throat> I feel like the Lord wants you to bring everything to him, but it's going to be a quick decision. It's like, he's just going to do it for you. And it's not going to be a lot of time. Hopefully you have prepared for the things that you're supposed to have. And God's been talking a lot about marriage, y'all. So um, I'm about to go into prayer. God's been talking. And I'm about to, let me slow down. God's been talking a lot about marriage and leading me to the songs of Solomon. And I feel like I, it would be remiss of me, like if I didn't mention some of the things that you should be aware of, right? Hey, Royal uh, Royalty. So, um, study, okay, this is one of your instructions, study, study the songs of Solomon and see what the Lord is ministering to you about it, right? He's going to give you new revelation. And Father, I pray right now that the spirit of revelation as it is upon my life, that it will come upon their lives as well. Those who are listening, Lord, those who want your fresh water, Lord, those who are thirsty for you in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you will minister to them, oh God, about your dark sayings, about your deeper revelations, oh God, those who seek you diligently in Jesus name. And so I've been listening to it, reading it, and I've seen things that I haven't never seen before, of course, because the Bible is like that, but it was like, whoa. And then also on the flip side, it's like, um, I have to say that um, you all have to be uh, warned to do your best to seek deliverance before you, um, before that husband or wife comes, right? Because some of you may have spiritual spouses, which I'm going to try not to go deep into, right? If you have ever had somebody, uh, some a spirit, it's a spirit really, masquerading as a person sleeping with you in a dream or touching you or anything like that, um, it's a spirit husband. What sounds confusing? Ask me the question, Lorena. I, I love questions. So just put up the question and I will go deeper and explain. So they call it a spirit husband because they try to prevent you from going into marriage. They try to, right. So a spiritual spouse is a spirit, right? Which can be a, attached to you by way of trauma, a door, right? A door that was open. Let's say an evil door that was open even when you were younger or when you were older. The curse um, doesn't come without a cause is what the Bible said. Amen. Amen. Royalty. Amen. That's great. And so if you have that issue, um, it will sometimes push you away from people, break up your relationships because that spirit husband is literally jealous. And so when men come around, new people come around, it will try to create misunderstandings and separate your relationships. So ask God to reveal to you, not just that, but like, cause if you don't have that, you don't want to say that, but ask God to reveal to you any evil spirit that may be hindering you in the realm of the spirit, trying to hinder your breakthrough, trying to hinder your marriage, trying to, because you don't want to go into marriage, having those spiritual problems. I'm telling you, right. They, they're also called marriage breaking spirits. Okay. So yes, they come in through trauma. 
you know, sometimes if you were molested when you were younger, raped, um, any kind of trauma can produce that kind of agreement in your dreams, um, in your visions. They come through uh, to have sex with you um, and to hurt you, steal, kill, and destroy, right? And so it's called spirit husband, okay? So they separate your relationships. If you have a boyfriend, like, you know, I'm not dating or anything, but I'm saying I know this from the past. You know, if you have a boyfriend, you know, there'll be like random arguments, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, you love each other, but there'll be like all kinds of weird, random arguments that come up and, you know, there'll be a lot of triggering. OK, you won't be confused if this is going on unless you don't remember your dreams at all. If you remember your dreams, even somewhat, you'll see it in the realm of the spirit because they masquerade as people that you trust they masquerade as you know um you know some man that you used to date sometimes or if it's even nastier it'll it'll um masquerade as a family member or something like that right it could masquerade as the source of trauma of your trauma um even though you wouldn't like that, if you're not praying enough, it's like, it's hard to fight. Like if you're tired or you're not praying enough, that's why I'm trying to go to sleep earlier too. Um, because uh, the Bible says that these spirits come to war with you at night. Not, not only those spirits, any spirits, they come to war with you at night. So, you know, and they sow tears, the Bible says at night. So you really want to get good sleep. It's also good for your health. You know, I need better sleep anyway, right? Keeps down your weight. Da, 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 da. Y'all all know that. But um, any of those spirits, you know, sometimes run together, right? Pride, um, lust, sexual perversion. If you never renounced, uh, let's say uh, some of you on here uh, may have dealt with porn, masturbation, um, if you if you're a man or a woman and you dealt with homosexuality, you need to go in the realm of the spirit and renounce that. When I say I mean pray, pray, pray until you know you can almost see yourself pulling down things in the realm of the spirit. Now you may not see anything, but just keep praying real hard against that because those are things that you want to get rid of before you get married. Okay. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that at least, okay? So study Songs of Solomon, right? And let God minister to you about it. Um, because I really feel that, yes, there are a lot of marriages coming, okay? It's different when you start hearing it for your people or, or yourself, right? And so now you really feel like, oh gosh, we got to prepare. <laughs> If you haven't been preparing already, go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and start preparing with your your oils and your perfumes and your bubble baths and whatever you do. But definitely, most definitely prepare with deliverance. Hallelujah. OK, because you're going to need that. You're going to need that. And also pray for his deliverance just in case he needs it. Um, God leads me to prophetically pray for my husband, whoever he is. He's been leading me like that for years. And I, I know when certain topics come up, I'm prophetically praying, right? Because I don't, I don't know him. So when certain things come up, I'm like, oh Lord, he must, he must have that problem. <laughs> so, you know, and it doesn't scare me. It's just like, oh boy, let me, I got to go in harder about this. Right. So that's how it's been for me over the years, but you'll feel it speeding up as you get closer to it. Like God will, Holy Spirit will start putting it on your heart more to pray for that person. And so men who are on here and single, um, you know, get rid of the lust. If you have that issue, get rid of the pornography DVDs in your house that are um, not pleasing to the Lord, you know, things like that, because believe it or not, it does mess up your relationships, gives you unrealistic expectations and you're defiling yourself and you will later on try to defile your wife. So, and I feel like there are people who are having issues like that on here, right? And I know for sure there's some men who watch me who have that issue already. But if you're watching right now, 
I pray that you will be delivered in the name of Jesus swiftly, swiftly by, by Holy Ghost fire in Jesus name. So, so there's that, right? And so God is also saying there will be rapid deliverance, rapid deliverance. So you start renouncing things and your deliverance will come like this. Just things are going faster, faster, faster. Things are being sped up, um, not only in our lives, but in the world, okay, in the world, right? Um, they, and also I felt that I wrote this down that there'll be spontaneous speaking in the tongues. Thank you, Lord. And that there'll be spontaneous Holy Ghost baptism by fire. So for some of you who still... Um, these are separate things, right? Holy Ghost baptism and speaking in tongues is the evidence. But for some of you who haven't received either, or there's one that you haven't received, I know that God is going to do that spontaneously by his hand. And you know, like uh, 5781, um, that's the whole thing. But um, the one stands for Aleph. And of course, the Lord, um, it means ox as well, the first, right? The first and the last, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And that God is going to do the work. The ox does the work. The ox treads out the grain. So let the Lord do his work and renounce what you need to renounce. Repent for what you need to repent for. But trust the God of heaven and earth will do it for you, right? So we decree rapid deliverance in the realm of the spirit, Lord. Let it take place in the natural even for me, God, in the name of Jesus, if there's anything that I still need, God, cleanse me, oh God, deliver me, make your face to shine upon me and your people, God, in Jesus' name. Okay, and then, so I'm checking this off. So the next thing is that um, I talked about the job offer. I talked about leaving fear and walking into faith, right? Walking in between those two walls of water. And the next thing is that, um, oh, I'm, I'm feeling like the Lord is saying, go back to the baptism by fire. So everyone knows what that is, right? The baptism with the Holy Ghost fire. Um, there was usually a second, um, experience, right? Uh, besides water baptism. And some people just had the baptism by fire in, in the book of Acts. And so you'll know when it comes upon you because, um, it's not a, how do I say? It's not a run of the mill kind of experience. It's not a, a regular, regular experience. You'll know when that happens. And you will probably speak in tongues with it. Now, some of you who are seers, you see things in the realm of the spirit more than you hear. Now, when, when I got saved, and I mean, it's always been in my whole life, but especially when I got saved, and I was reading the Bible, reading the Bible, I would hear more than I saw. But I was seeing since I was a little girl. I just, I couldn't tell anybody, but people knew in my family, right? Because of course I would act weird and I would see stuff. And <laughs> sometimes I would, you know, say it, sometimes it would be weird. But when you come into Christ, he sanctifies your gifts, right? He sanctifies your eyes, your ears, everything. and you have to also cooperate and agree with that and ask the Lord to sanctify your eyes and ear gates in the name of Jesus. Cause because they're gates that can have an open door to evil spirits. Right. So like if you're still listening to uh, music, sometimes that have sexual spirit. And I know people don't like to hear this because it seems strict, but y'all, I am a witness to this stuff. Okay. Like, there's things that I used to still want to listen to. Um, and even now, like I still can't, I just cannot, like I would undoubtedly be fighting something like the night of or the next day. Um, some of the African music um, that I, I like to work out to, they might have, they might come, even the beat, y'all, like come with those sexual spirits. So I don't know if this too deep for some of y'all, but I'm going to just say it. <laughs> I cannot, you know, not say it. So seek the Lord. You don't believe me. Seek the Lord on it. Don't bash me. You know, it's true. It's true. If you see something fighting you at night, 
uh, all of a sudden you have the spirit of fear and you just came on some porn website or something like that, then uh, hello, 99% of the time it's connected, right? Um, I don't want to even talk about family stuff or generation stuff. I just want to focus on what, yes, guard your ear gate, guard your ear gates and guard your eye gates in the name of Jesus Christ. So, you know, um, that also goes for, um, you know, people that you're connecting with, right? So always ask the Lord about the new connections that are coming. So you can't be afraid of everybody. You have to, yes, yes, get randomly angry while listening to the song, right? So that's what happens to a lot of people when they listen to rap and stuff like that. Trust me, I used to listen to rap all the time, wu Tang Clan back in the days in college. And yeah, it would make you angrier. Like, <laughs> um, you know, it make you want to do things that you usually wouldn't do. You know, you just, you, because they carry spirits on it. They carry, and if you listen to them now and you knew all the words back then, you will find that you can still say the words, right? You can still say the words. So it's programmed in your memory. Like the word needs to be programmed in your memory. You know, it's programmed there the way that a, a gospel song, a clean, good gospel song needs to be programmed in your memory, right? Just like those commercials that are very catchy, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, and da-da-da-da-da. Do you know a gospel song that way? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you break out in the middle of the street sometimes just walking down the street saying, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, are those childhood gospel songs coming to your mind? Sometimes they do for me. You know what I mean? In Brooklyn, especially. Um, that's because I used to walk a lot in the street. So, um, and God will lead you prophetically to sing those songs over yourself, right? So, um, not wanting to go off on a tangent, I will say that you will meet people and even their names are going to be prophetic. Hallelujah. Even their names, the names of streets, just like, um, I was giving an example that the names of streets, just like the street called straight that Saul came upon, um, you know, when he was about to get deliverance, right? Those people will have prophetic names. So it will be good. It will be a good exercise. I'm just saying it'll be good exercise if you look up their names. Hallelujah. If you look up their names when you meet them, right? And ask the Lord, am I supposed to be around these people, Lord? Is there something that they need to teach me? Is there something that I need to teach them? Um, are they going to stretch me? And I, I, I got to tell you, I was around some smart people. Like, I'm like, oh, they know. They know a good amount. You know, you have to be around people who know as much as you or sometimes more than you, right? Like, you don't want to be the only person that knows everything. And also, you don't know everything. So it'd be good if you were around people who stretched you and taught you something new. However, if you are you start getting around them and you're getting triggered left, right, and center, you want to ask the Lord, Father, what is this? What's going on? Why am I triggered by these people? Penny, I don't know the meaning of your name. You know, you could look it up. Um, is it literally Penny? That's your whole name. You can look it up on etym etymology dot uh it's dot net, I believe. Etymology dot net. Um I I always used to tell y'all that last year. Um, remember I spent some time on names, or you can look up abarim publicationscom to look up the meaning of your name. Or at least the root. You'll see, you'll find the root of your name. Amen. Um, like I know what all my names mean, and they are definitely true to me. Like they <laughs> that's it's who I am, right? Um, which is amazing, which is amazing. And I always used to ask my mom, like, why did you pick that name? She's like, I don't know, you know, I just I just didn't like the name. I uh, you know, I was like, was anybody in the family named that? No, no, no. I just, I just always like the name. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, and it's true. Nobody's in my family name. Arlene, uh, my grandmother's name is Ruth, so I know where that came from. So, but ain't nobody named Arlene, <laughs> you know. 
So, um, a lot of Jamaicans uh, call, uh, name their kids Arlene, but I'm not Jamaican. So, you know, my mom just liked the name. My mom just liked the name. Those are the only other people I ever meet named Arlene. Uh, and Ruth, forget about it. Not, not a lot of people named Ruth, for real, you know. So, another thing was that sometimes um, uh, Holy Spirit also gave me the word unassuming unassuming joanna did you look at oh yeah abram dash publications yep exactly how you spelled it but with a dash in the middle dot com um did i just look it up for you mm. penny you're trying to make me do work um but let me go ahead oh hallelujah um but look look that up right and y'all feel feel free to share this out um so the next thing is that some of their names will be prophetic. Um, even those of you who are pastors, ministers of the Lord, you'll be um, going to find homes. I mean, not homes, but buildings for your churches. And even those um, names or streets, street names are going to be prophetic. Hallelujah. And God is going to be showing you that is him. That's him. Right. And also I got this word that it's not going to be your first choice. For most of you, it's going to be your second choice, right? The second home, the second building, the second man, right? Those of you who are looking for a house, it's not going to be the first house with a lot of the things you think you like. It's going to really be the second one with everything it's supposed to have, right? The everything you wanted to have, right? Um, the first website, uh, Joanna, I think was, I said etymology etymology.com right um or dot net was it dot net but anyway etymology.net or dot com e-t-y-m-o-l-o-g-y okay so you can look up your name you can look up other people's names you can look up the root words and all of that um oh this is not it it's something else it's not dot net it's like dot com but yeah, I don't know this website, etymology.net. It's something else. But Google that. Y'all be okay. Y'all y'all will get it for sure. Um, uh, not that this website is not bad, it's bad or anything. I just don't, I'm not familiar with that, uh, this one. Okay, so the next thing is that, um, won't be enough. okay. So yeah, I said that it won't be the first one. It'll be the second one. Just like everything else in your life, the Lord has made it prophetic, right? So um, Adam was the first. Jesus is the second and the last. Amen. But he was also the first. So that's a, another thing the Holy Spirit was ministering to me. It's not going to be the first choice. It's going to be the second choice. And this is a corporate word for y'all, okay? Um, especially those who you you are moving. You're getting buildings for ministry, um, houses, or God is bringing that man or woman into your life, the first one may look great and may have a prophetic name. Some things may line up, but there's just a few things that's off, okay? Which bring me brings me to the other word that it'll be unassuming, unassuming. So I looked at the word unassuming um, and it's, it means modest or unpretentious. Um, of course, when you get a word, you know, even though you think, you know, the meaning it's always good when Lord utters a word to you to look it up anyway, <laughs> don't assume, you know, the word, right. For sure. Right. Don't assume, you know, the word that well, so modest or unpretentious. So that thing may look modest. It might, you might view it as modest and it's unassuming, right? So you would never think this, or you would 